Hello everyone, it is me, Guillotine. Welcome back to another Aces Battle Runes video. Today I'm going to talk about some deck building philosophy like I promised in my last video. To be honest, I did have another video already recorded. However, it was really long. It was about an hour and um, also a pretty big update came out between editing it. So I just decided to start over. Um, some transparency here, a little bit of the really the biggest reason behind the lack of content lately is I'm just increasingly getting frustrated with the um, software that I'm using to put out these videos. I'm doing it entirely from my phone and what I'm using is just really buggy. So if you also make content and have a reliable screen recorder and editor that you want to just tell me about, I would really love that. So there's a few reasons why you might select the cards that you choose. I would go through all of them, but there's 54 cards and that would take all day. Um, maybe you're a new player, you don't have all of the cards unlocked and you just kind of have to go with what you got. Maybe you do have most of the cards unlocked, but you've only leveled up a handful of them and your lower levels just can't compete. Hey, I'm right there with you. I've still got some level ones here and some fives somewhere. Um, so yeah, I feel ya. But, so let's just assume that you have all of the cards unlocked. Let's assume that levels are not an issue. Um, you might also have daily quests, um, which sometimes I'll build a quest just around my dailies. Um, ninjas and high priests and bats, tide commanders. Um, I can already start visualizing a deck where all four of those could work and I could really start busting out my dailies while experimenting with new unit combinations. But right now, I just want to build the deck solely for competing, solely for playing on the ladder. So the first thing I usually do is decide what card do I want to showcase? What card do I want to be the focal point of my deck? Um, so with this new update, Rangers got a big buff. Um, they went from 120 gold down to 100 and I don't remember what their attack was, but I feel like they their attack maybe has gone up slightly. Um, maybe not. But, but that decrease in cost makes them more viable for early game and for scaling, um, which you might be thinking 20 gold, it's not a big deal, but you know, 20 gold times five, that's a whole nother ranger. So essentially you can build six where you used to build five, which having an extra unit uh, can go a long way, especially early game. So I want to go ahead, I want to pencil these guys in. I also have mentioned in my other videos that I think Vikings are a really good combination with rangers. Um, reason being is the Vikings are tanky and they stun while the ranger can sit back and shoot off arrows. Um, Vikings and rangers are both really good versus hounds. They can both kill workers really fast. Um, Vikings with that stun effect can also just hold up units that would typically win that fight for a couple seconds while the rangers put in some damage. I just really think it's a solid combination. So I like to use rangers in, a, in an aggressive manner. So I want to also pair them with hounds. Um, I want to do some early pressure. I want to have these vikings to kind of carry me into mid game. And then I want to have some good options for late game. A couple things to consider. Um, you have two units that only cost gold and one unit in vikings that don't cost very much gas. So for my following units, I really want something that has a little bit of a higher gas and maybe a little bit of a lower gold. That way our resources can flow more evenly. Uh, we don't get bottlenecked. We don't get into a situation to where we're out of gold and just have a ton of gas or vice versa. I've run into the other one a lot where I'm just out of gas and the only thing I can build is hounds and that's not good for me. So let's take a look here. Um, Rangers can attack the air um, and the ground. Vikings and hounds can really take care of a lot of things on the ground. However, it would be nice to get them some area of effect kind of support. So I think that we should add some tanks here or cannoneers, if you will. Even though mine are low level, I might go with elf here um, just because they're awesome. 
elves are a good fit here because I do have two units that are only gold. I've got the Vikings that are a low gas cost and the tanks are only 100 gas. So elf here kind of makes sense because they are really expensive. They cost 175 gas. So if you're going to use elves, you really want the rest of your deck to be a low gas cost unless you're just going to be really good at, at macroing and getting your economy very strong and being able to get good value out of your units and defend them well um let's say though that you're not good at that and let's say that you also are like dude i can't have a level seven in my deck there's no way i'm gonna win with level seven it's a cool card and if it was a higher level that would be great but i just can't so i mean you could go sniper here um necro just got a buff where it's only going to cost you 50 gold which is awesome and 150 gas um, this used to be one of my favorite cards and concept it is one of my favorite cards i might start using them again just because uh that low gold cost makes it a bit more viable um but right here just uh overall i think a good choice would be these wolf riders um they only cost five supply they only cost 35 gas um and they are a little bit tanky for a ranged unit they can take some um they can take some damage so let's let's put these guys in here even though elves are fun and um and whatnot i think this is a very solid deck i think you can get a lot of wins with this deck you've got the air covered you've got the ground covered the mineral and gas distribution is very even um, and so now on to towers. I always recommend using one tower and two spells. Um, some people don't. I used to play with no towers, but um, the, the more you rank up, it, it becomes more and more difficult to play without one, especially when you're trying to macro up. Um, you need something there to help defend your base. Um, since I have two units that are very good versus hounds, I will probably elect to go with these electric towers. I usually go with electric or ice. I would go ice if, say, I didn't have hounds and rangers, like if I had spearmen or even swordsmen. Um, if, if I just felt like I could die to a dog rush or bats or imps, the ice tower is the way to go it has area of effect damage it really slows those units down and can kill multiple of them at the same time however since i feel pretty confident on that and i want to kind of defend against say something like someone sending mini dragons or gargoyles after me or you know big heavy units maybe they also have vikings or orcs electric tower is the way to go um, the other two the watchtower and the cannon uh, or the catapult, sorry, are good. They only cost gold and no gas. Um, you can get some fun little tower rushes with them, but I feel like for serious competitive play, I'm not saying they're worthless, but they're not really going to do the trick that you want a tower to do. However, the watchtower is the only tower at the moment that has detection, so it's a good tower to have if you feel like your opponent or if you feel like you're often dying to, say, um, skeleton rogues or bats or, you know, anything that's invisible. Or, um, you know, if there's a pesky owl around, that watchtower is going to be able to detect it. Um, but I would say you're better off just building an electric tower and an owl. Um, anyways, on to spells. So spells... It really depends on your play style, but it also depends heavily on your unit distribution. Again, this deck is gold focused, not much gas involved. Um, so we can potentially go with something that costs pretty high gas, like poison. Poison costs 125 gas, only 50 gold. Um, and it does a lot of damage in a quick amount of time. The downside to poison is it's pretty easy to dodge. So some people like to stack it with blizzard which does a decent amount of damage, but it also slows your um, enemy down. Um, or lightning, which does a 
pretty good amount of damage and also just completely stuns them. So I've already got the Vikings for stunning, so maybe I'll stay away from Lightning. However, if your Vikings can't get close, Lightning is really good. Um, a lot of people are using the Tide Commanders right now. Um, there's ways to, to defeat them. They can seem pretty strong. If you're having a hard time defeating them, let me know. Maybe I'll share some secrets. But so... For this deck, since I want to do early pressure, let's use Blessing here. Um, blessing cost just 100 of each gas and gold, and um, it will give you the extra health often to just make it through a fight. Um, it really makes all of your units very tanky, like even Vodunes and Bats like with Blessing can be kind of hard to kill, and just those few extra seconds can, can help you win a fight. Um, and then also I think poison is a good use here, um, just to have some more area of effect damage causing, um, causing your opponent to have to reposition, um, at the very least. And if they don't, you're going to really punish them for it. Um, I think this is a solid deck. Try this deck out. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope this was helpful to kind of summarize, pick a focal point of your deck, um, and then if that unit is very good against the ground, make sure you've got air support. If that unit is very good against the air, make sure you have ground support. If they're very good against both, odds are they're going to die easy and make sure you have something up front to protect them. Always go with two spells, go with one tower. Always have at least one unit that only costs gold. In this deck, we've got two. Um, I would mostly, most of the time I would only go with one. This deck I think just makes sense to have two. So you could do a lot of builds out of this deck early game. You could go with a uh, Hound and Ranger Rush and then start sending some Vikings into the mix and then kind of transition into mid game and late game. Your Vikings can really hold the line along with your tanks being able to do a lot of area of effect damage and your Wolf Riders being able to take care of the air. And you can kind of sprinkle in some Hounds and Rangers when you are running low on gas. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I might try to get some footage with this deck and show off the new Ranger buff. I also want to show off um, some Swordsmen and Necromancers who they also got a buff. Um, none of the buffs or nerfs have been really made public. It's just been kind of playing and figuring it out. Um, but stay tuned and I will holler at you all next time. Later.